And joining us on the line, great to be chatting to him. We've got Daniel Reeves. G'day, mate. How are you doing today? Good, thanks, Clayton. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm surviving okay at the moment. What about for yourself in this uh, COVID world that we've got? Are you Have you been coping okay and navigating through it You know, the best you can? Yeah, yeah, do, doing my best, um, as, as we all are. It's a tricky time. And um, I think being a musician, I'm very lucky um, because I am creative. So that certainly keeps me occupied and... Um, keeps things ticking along and um, great to be able to have a new single out at this time as well. How have you been, like, is the, the, the I'll say the C word, has that been an inspiration in some ways to the, the music that you are creating at the moment or you're trying to have it not influence anything you're doing? Um, I, I think for me, I look, we've all had a different um, journey on this one yep. and for me, Prior to the pandemic, I was I was travelling a lot, playing shows. Um, I, I had missed a lot of time that I used to love, you know, spending writing. And um, so for me, I've just made the most of the opportunity to, to write. Um, I, I've come up with so many songs during this time and, and I'm also very lucky that I have my home studio. So I'm always putting down um, new ideas and, yep. and working on something. So that's really... Yeah, it's kept me inspired, I guess. You're in your home studio recording things. Have you been doing the Zoom sessions that some of the artists have been doing? Have you sort of gone down that road as well? Yeah, I do. I do some. Um, I do have some chats on Zoom, and and I've been doing um, the Facebook lives. Yeah. Um, which which I've found great. It's been really good for me um, personally, you know, to perform, and it's also good to stay in touch with everyone and. Yep. I get a lot of really positive feedback how, you know, because in Melbourne, where where I live, you know, obviously we can't do much at all. And and I think people are just wrapped to still see their favourite artists and and they do reach out and send messages to say thanks. We can still see some live music, albeit on Facebook. But um, I've I've also found that's been a good way to tell stories about the songs because um, I guess the last few years leading up to the pandemic, I was playing mainly with the band, um, and you've got to keep that energy going. You're upbeat, and yeah. and and that's how you sort of work the show. And um, where in the Facebook live setting, being all acoustic, and you don't have to worry so much about that. You can actually tell the stories, and it becomes really personal. But it's a, just a, a really good way to connect for um, the audience, but also the artist. How how challenging has it been to to make that connection because when you've got an audience in front of you, you can look at their eyes and see the expression on their faces. But when you're looking down a little tiny camera lens, um, how do you do it then? You know, how does it play in your mind to make that connection work? Oh, I think oh, it's probably those first few Facebook lives. Um, it, it's not as easy as it may appear. Yeah. Um, I was really, really nervous. Um, but I think as you get going with a few of them, um, you learn – um, sort of how to approach it. Like there'll be certain folks that will ask questions about songs and then that sort of sparks you off and you go, oh, hey, well, yep. I had this really great experience on tour here and I'd like to tell that story for me next song. And it sort of, le- if, if you let it flow, um, there, there still is good connection there. But yes, you can't... Um, <laughs> You can't see them tapping their feet or anything yeah. like that, which which is a little bit different talking to, to your phone. <laughs> How much are you missing live gigs? Oh, yeah. It, it, it's hard and it hurts. Um, I mean, I've only... The last one I did was um, earlier this year in February and just, I think, the excitement at that time for here uh, in Victoria for us... Yeah. It was, it was just amazing. It was like, um, it's hard to describe, actually. It, it was just so heartwarming. It, it was just brilliant and, yeah, very much missing it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, you're not alone to any other artists that I've asked that question to, and I get a very similar answer. And one of the, the things that they, they sort of say to me about it is that it's made them sort of just stop for a moment and and sort of cherish the moment because they've realised that's something that they were so used to always happening that it can be so easily and quickly taken away. So, you know, are you are you reliving some of those moments? Like you, you know, your last gig last February, are you you sort of you've, you've cherished the moments of that? Yeah, I and I think it's really important that we do um, because um, it, it's it's been a long road. I think it's still a long way 
out of this yet yep. um, to come. And you do have to, you know, you do have to appreciate those magical moments you get. And and I think, you know, you've got to focus on that positive side of things to keep you going. There will be another chance. We don't know when, but, you know, we will get another chance. And I'm sure that every musician that does will be running right out the door to grab it. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a venue saying, hey, we're, we're, we're waiting for someone to come and perform and there'll be, and there'll be more mu- musos there than anyone else. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You'll all be fighting for the spot. You know, get off. You've had your three your three minutes. It's my turn. Get off. Uh, well, uh, well, let's hope that does happen because I know there are so many artists that just want to perform. That's it. Because that's that's what you do. You know, I do what I do, mm. and you do what you do. And and to not be able to do it, it is it is frustrating. And you, yeah. you can you can just try and describe it, but until you're in it and no one really gets it and understands. So I feel for you. I've spoken to so many. I feel so, yeah, I just want you getting out there. I want to be able to, I want to be able to look at you, tapping my feet and I want you, I want to stay engaged that way and not down a camera lens. So we're hoping for that. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great to see a live drum kit after all this, I reckon. Yes. <laughs> a band with a live drummer would be awesome. That would be very good indeed. Well, <laughs> well, Daniel, your current song, it's its world learning, and in some ways it kind of feels like it is a song, it is a kind of a COVID song, even though I know it wasn't a COVID song, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I, I just think music's um, a- amazing like that. So I, I wrote that song, you know, a couple of years ago now, um, and, and that came from a heavy touring schedule. Um, I'd actually at the time... Although I loved every minute of what I, I'd been doing, I mean, I was just sort of living life like town to town, show to show, and yeah. and, and all that was amazing. But it, it also came with a, a feeling after a while of a lot of disconnect with the ones I I love and the ones I'm close to, and, and I felt like I had to, you know, get back to Melbourne and um, spend more time with my friends and so forth, and certainly catch up with family. And at the time. Um, when I came back, I certainly found with my friends that they also experienced a bit of disconnect with everything because because yep. life does change at regular intervals. And as a songwriter, you, you, you take in, you, into consideration your surrounds, you know, with your with your storytelling. And and the song came out. Um, sorry, I wrote the song, and you know, I didn't get a chance to put it on an album at, um, for a little while. And then I was, it's a song I've played constantly at home, and I'm like, when can I get a chance to do this? And I have. And the timing, lyrically with the song and and what it's the story, it, it really just fits perfect for now. Yeah. It, it certainly does. That's that's what I I took from it. And then when I was reading a bit more about it, it was like, wow, you know, it was almost like you had a bit of a a prophecy about things and that. And it, it just seems that way. But it, it it just feels it. But it's it's not focusing on the negative. It's focusing more to me on the positive and that, as we so often hear from our leaders, that you know we're all in this together and we can get through it. But this song is sort of saying that, you know, we're going to get through it. It, it, We're going to be positive. There is better days ahead. The sun's still going to be shining. We're going to get through it together, and we can do it. We can do it. We've just got to be positive, and we've got to want to do it. And and that's the message I get from it. And that's what I like about it, that it could have been a bit gloomy. It could have been melancholy. (laughs) But it isn't. It's up, and it's like, yeah, we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. Yeah, and look, that's you know that's the way I write a lot of my songs, um, and that's the way I live my life as well. And 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 I think the you know you, to try and stay focused on, on the positive always. And and I think you know the meaning for the song for me is that if you smile, the world will smile back. Yeah, yes, it's always good to smile and. And uh, I think one of my old bosses said to me, why are you smiling? And I said, because, well, why frown? And he said, oh, yeah. I, he goes, I thought that you'd realise that someone else had stuffed up or you knew how to blame them for something. And I went, well, that could be a good reason. I'm smiling even more now. But but that was sort of uh, the thing. You know, I just think you've got to smile and, and get through things. And, and it's it's so much easier. Just let's just smile and move on and, and not get bogged down in things. And it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a good Look, attitude. Yeah. It- can be a rabbit hole if, if people get bogged down and yeah. um, that's why you know I think it's important we all do our best best we can you know absolutely Daniel what was the the first record you ever bought oh I that's a good question um, I believe I was in primary school at the time and I had a bit of a win I requested a couple of records um, at the time. And I know one of them was 
Poison, the album. Oh, okay, um, yep. So that was that's an interesting one from a country artist. Yeah. Um, I think there was La Bumba by Richie Valens and oh, yeah, Faith yeah. by George Michael because that was big at the time. Well, wow, that's a good mix there. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, bit of an interesting mix, but yeah, all very you know successful songs at that time for sure. And uh, but when I also think about it, uh, each of the the tracks, uh, "Faith" by George Michael and Richie Valens, "La Bamba," and even "Poison," yeah, it's a lot of guitar work in there. So as someone who loves the guitar, uh, I can kind yeah. of understand that. So yeah, that, that makes I love a bit the of sense. Rhythm, rhythm yeah. yeah, rhythm is just everything. It makes you move and and it makes you feel. And um, I think it's a huge part of the magic of music. What's your favourite guitar? Ooh, if I said acoustic, I'd have to say Martin. Yeah. So there are many good brands, but I, I'd, uh, I play a Martin. Um, and if I said electric, I, I just can't go past Fender. Yeah, good old Fenders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a guitarist recently told me that uh, when he's gone into a guitar shop, back when he, you could go into guitar shops, and he, <laughs> said, he said that you'd walk past them, but there was there'd always be one that you would pick up, and you could just oh. you'd just feel it, and you know, yeah, this is one. So that's the same experience. Oh, definitely. I mean, I I'm probably lucky in the sense um, that that I'm not partial to to running out and buying too many guitars. Um, but I have had it before where, yeah. you know, you're in a music shop and I've gone in to buy an effects pedal or something like that. And then you go, oh, I'll just quickly have a look at this guitar. And and um, I, I have bought two guitars by doing that. They just yeah. feel that they're just right. <laughs> There's something about them. Yeah, that's just the, one of the things that yeah. I found talking to guitarists that they, they can stand there and they can look at 10 guitars, all the same color, but there'll be one of them that just seems to be a bit brighter. There's just something about it. They touch it and they know straight away. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like they choose you. They well, that could be it too. Well, Daniel, what's <laughs> coming up? Obviously, there. You know, we're we're starting to get things easing up. Will there? Have you got gigs kind of sort of penciled in at some stage in the future? What's going to be happening? Um, I, I think I'm going to play it pretty cautious at the moment. Like, I'll definitely. Um, I've got three more songs um, that are finished. And um, I'll, I'll release those over a period of time. Um, I'll continue with the Facebook Live yep. um, shows, and but I think I'm going to just wait a little bit with the shows because um, I think it's. I've seen it with so many musicians. It, it's just heartbreaking for them when when they're looking forward to a show and it gets cancelled, yeah. and they've put all this work to try and promote it, then they have to send out messages of apologies and. You know, it's certainly not the musician's fault. And I, th- I think that's really difficult. And so for now, I'm just going to focus on what I can do and just hope for the best with gigs, you know, yeah. coming out of this. Well, if we want to get some of your music, as we're going to get to hear your, your latest single in just a sec, but if we want to know more about your music, and even when you do eventually get to tour, we can go to your website, and that's danielreevesmusic.com. And, folks, click on the shop section. That's where you can find uh, Daniel's music. You can download it. You can purchase it. It's all sitting there. Uh, no T-shirts, mate. What's going on? I was looking for one in my size, but I can't find one. What's going on? Oh, yes, I, I have to do um, I have to do some T-shirts, and I have to also get some stubby holders as well. <laughs> Putting the pressure on you now. Hey, at yeah. least at least you've got something there. I spoke to someone the other day that didn't have anything there. They, and they, they oh. were, yeah. So that's what happens, you know. So yeah, we, we can't get to live gigs, so we can't support you that way. But I'm giving your websites a plug. So yeah, thank go, you for the tip as well. Click on the shop section, folks, and do that. <laughs> Daniel, it has been absolutely a pleasure chatting to you. I know we're going to be chatting again soon when you release more music for us to enjoy. We've got your current single here ready to go. Please stay nice and safe. Things are going to ease up. You'll be out there doing gigs soon for sure. If you could please introduce the song for us, and thank you so much for spending time with us today on Flow. This is Daniel Rees, and you're listening to my latest single, World Learning.
I see. 